the electricity grid is changing all the time. Whether you like it or not, over 40%, if not 45% of our electricity in the last 12 months here in the UK came from clean sources. So that means about a quarter of it came from wind, 15% from nuclear power, 6% from solar power, a bit from hydro, only 31% from gas power stations and 0.1% from coal. So the system that powers us has changed. It is changing and it will continue to change. And guess what? We don't really notice it. But, and this really is one for all those carbon accounting nerds out there. Please do bear with me because this is kind of interesting. On the 10th of June this week, electricity, at least on paper, just got a whole lot cleaner. Dropping from 207 grams of CO2 per kilowatt hour to 177 grams, a whopping 14.5% reduction. And this date, the 10th of June, has been in my diary for months waiting for the update in conversion factors. But before you switch off, before you think Tom's even more of a CO2 accounting obsessive than I thought he was, let me explain why this is at least a bit interesting and maybe even could be important. Okay, so this big grand accounting exercise that is carbon reporting using the greenhouse gas reporting protocol sets out how we should, um, or could, but should estimate or calculate emissions for different types of activities. So the, the conversion factor spreadsheet has got tabs for everything. It's got tabs for miles driven in different types of cars, different types of fuel used and their emissions, uh, refrigerants and their emissions, and importantly for this video, the average emissions per kilowatt hour on the UK grid. I mean, the grid is different all around the country. Uh, you can look at the a National Grid Energy Systems Operator website and you can see different CO2 intensities for, for different regions. But nationally, we tend to use one average figure so that we're all reporting the same number. So we've got a level, level playing field, whether that's true in reality or not. But the government through the Department for Energy Security and Net Zero, um, they update this, this every year, this spreadsheet every year, often making small changes to certain figures um, that those of us that think about CO2 analysis um, think are important and therefore we're paying quite close attention to. And over the last decade, conversion factors for grid electricity have changed fairly dramatically, reducing from 462 grams of CO2 per kilowatt hour in 2015 to this 177 grams of CO2 per kilowatt hour this week. And that is a significant change in a decade, which re reflects a change in our systems. Overall, since 2015, this is a 62% drop in the emissions linked to electricity because we've moved away from coal power, because we've built lots of wind power, and because we've built some solar PV systems. But the system is changed. And the change in reporting factors is not actually that consistent. So in 2018, the drop was 20%, 2017, 15%, and this year's drop comes in at third place with a drop of 14.5%. Actually, in 2023, the conversion factor went up by 7%. 2024 stayed basically the same. So the drop this year is actually after a bit of a flat line since 2021. So, it, so it's kind of notable. So why is this important? Um, well, I think it's important for a few reasons. If we're thinking about how we reduce emissions in the UK, changing how we evaluate a technology can really affect an answer that we come out with, both in terms of emissions analysis and where our priorities are, or in wider decarbonisation strategy, so how do we get to where we want to go? And then finally, what we are reporting, what, what the figures mean in our emissions. And a change like this to the conversion factors really changes the equation for some of the technologies that we could use and therefore how we could talk about this challenge. So a heat pump or an electric vehicle now looks even lower emissions when analysed versus a gas boiler or a petrol car. A solar panel has, actually has less impact when it's displacing grid electricity. A plug-in radiator, a direct electric radiator, would now definitely be a lower emissions source of heat than a gas boiler. A gas combined heat and power engine that as recently as 2019, maybe 2020, might have, had, might have reduced emissions for an organization 
is now firmly increasing an organization's emissions when compared with grid electricity, although it may well reduce costs. So this step change in conversion factors caused by progress on grid decarbonization changes the emissions business case for lots of different technologies. And that's kind of interesting. And it actually reinforces the case for electrification as a path to net zero. So let's look at my home as an example. It's heated by a heat pump running at a fairly mediocre efficiency of 340% over the whole year. It's powered by grid electricity that's just got that bit cleaner. And it now would be 75% lower emissions than a standard efficiency gas boiler. My electric vehicle, powered by grid electricity, just got that bit cleaner. And it now would be 77% lower uh, CO2 emissions than an equivalent car. And these equations contribute to when we are make, we're, we're, cre we're writing business cases uh, about when we're thinking through investment for decarbonisation. This does help make the difference and make the case for electrification, even though really it's just an accounting exercise. It is reflecting real change and it could help make good decisions leading to better, more electrification and a quicker path to low emissions technology, low emissions organisations, low emissions homes. Unfortunately, it does come with a warning. Uh, I mean, this year, as companies file their annual re financial reports, they'll also calculate their emissions and they'll be using updated factors. And for 2025, they may well show a step change in their emissions linked to their electricity use, which is what we tend to call scope two emissions for most organizations. These emissions will go down by 15% without lifting a figure, finger, without Behave, any behavior change without any energy efficiency, without any investment in renewables or any change at all. So we may see, if you're paying attention, some communication celebrating progress, which from my perspective, does risk a whole bunch of 2025 greenwashing. When we see companies celebrating year on year emissions reduction, we probably should dig into a couple of things. We should have a look at their scope one emissions so essentially the fossil fuels that they've burned have they stayed the same have they gone up or have they come down and secondly we should look at whether they report the the volume the kilowatt hours of electricity that they've used as well as their scope two emissions have they used more or less electricity if we look at those two things i think it would really help show what's happened and if an organization has taken really good steps to move away from fossil fuels by electrifying vehicles and buildings, then you know what, great. Their scope one emissions will be really low already and they will see a step change in their total emissions because of this change in electricity. So overall, I think this is something to celebrate. It formally shows progress in the grid decarbonizing and it will be reflected in a step change in many organizations emissions reporting. This is a good thing, this shows progress. But it could risk some organizations, some people sitting on their hands while someone else builds a wind farm somewhere else or a solar farm somewhere else. They could say and they could celebrate that this, cha this change has, has resulted in a seven or 8% reduction in overall emissions when not much really would have changed in their reality. So if we as individuals or if we as organizations care about climate action, we need to see this reduction in the intensity of electricity emissions and we need to see a reduction in the fossil fuels that we burn for heat and transport. We need the two together. Um, the two together gives us real change. So I think we can celebrate progress and this update helps us spot that something has changed. Um, and we can pay attention to whether we are really making good progress, lasting progress or not. I'm not sure I can believe how excited I've been here in making a video about carbon reporting and essentially an accounting exercise. I'm sorry. But if you've got this far, um, thank you. We really must be kindred spirits on this stuff. Um, let me know whether you got as excited as I did about this change by dropping me a comment um, below the video. And do get in touch if there's anything that you think I can help with in your decarbonization journey.